Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself a meadow starter house. Without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. And for our palette, I'm going to be using a relatively simple one, although a little diverse. If you have access to 121 blocks or are watching this after roughly June 7th, then replace all andesite with tough. Otherwise, this might seem daunting at first, especially since you saw the thumbnail, but in reality, this isn't that hard. Even though it's pretty long, it's nothing terribly unique when it comes to coming up with new things for it. It's a pretty generic house with a unique palette. Then, what you want to do is find yourself a meadows biome. It can't be a high up plains, although you could build this anywhere. I recommend doing it in the meadows though. And once you found your area, Make sure it's decently flat and place down your foundation. Don't go terribly complex with it. Make it about four or five blocks tall, and then you'll want to space it like this. And then you can see how this is one segment. It's stereotypical Gearsaw Studios segments every build design. And you do it like this. You might want to go three wide. That's up to you on this part, but it should be L shaped because it's a bit more unique of a shape. And then, once you've created your shape, if you need to go around corners, do it like this. You have more room this way, and you aren't cramping the interior's windows. If you do not include this gap when segmenting builds, then you'll end up with really weird looking windows. Do this, don't bother with texturing them quite yet, and then make it as wide as you can. Well as wide as you can, I mean about 7 segments. Because, of course, you have to account for the fact that this has a pretty unique looking roof that uses warped planks. As you're putting in your foundation, of course you need to do it quite carefully, because any mistake on the foundation will reflect a lot on the build. And one thing you might note with these gaps is although it's going to help it in the long run, you're going to have issues with building the rest of the foundation. So extend it by this and notice how they're desynced now. Do it again and you can see how they're very desynced. And this is not good. The solution? Make a larger segment or even make a very thick divider because of course these gaps are going to be filled in. It's up to you about how you want to solve the problem but it's important that you know about it so that way you can fix it when you have a solution. Once complete with the foundation, should look something like this. You can see, pretty simple, although it has a little bit more shape to it than usual. And what you want to do here is make sure that everything lines up well. If there's something that doesn't line up and it's really annoying, place a door. I mean, considering how large this build is, you probably want more accessibility for it. Other times, you might want to completely cut out certain walls, do something like this, but that's down to personal preference. So, at this point, what you want to do is start adding your wall segments, although you might want to do the floor first. So, wall segments are going to look like this. You can see sideways oak stripped logs, and then we have the planks. And from here, we need some other planks, so, getting birch and spruce, like I said in the palette, and now outline the whole room with spruce, and you can see how this works. And then, once you've outlined it with spruce, then you want to fill it in with birch. A little bit of world edit here, and you can see how this would work out in a real room. So, it's pretty pleasant. At this point, you'll want to fill in these basic details here, and make sure your walls are indented by one, like this. With our rudimentary wall stuff going on, we now move back to the foundation, because the tops of the foundations need to connect to said walls, and now that's simpler. Add some details using stairs, something like this, and then you'll want to grab your foliage, like this, and make bushes. Very simple. And make your own unique bush designs. You can use azaleas, but personally, I use them way too much. Maybe even alternate their height. Some might want to be shorter than others. 
because, you know, a little bit more variance. And then go to the inside and replace some of the bricks with cracked variations. And once you do that, then you'll have a finished foundation from this perspective. If you were to copy this along and of course vary it a little, then you will have a nice little connection. Of course, make sure that this area connects up well. This is not a very good example of a transition here. You might want to incorporate more dark oak into it. It's up to you about how you want to figure this one out. But of course, you can always watch for my solution. You can see that I have been a little busy working on individual parts. For one, under our leaves, maybe put moss, mainly because the grass color here is a little questionable at best for some of the vibrancy we want. Then, I recommend building pathways around it out of granite. You can see how granite contrasts nicely, although you might want to go with calcite or diorite for this as well. I do not recommend normal andesite or tuff for this. And then, from here, you might want to add some planter boxes around. I recommend spruce trapdoors, even though I'm going to be using dark oak accents. You can see there is some much needed contrast needed here. So I've decided to use spruce. Then we have our intricate wood designs out of the andesite. And now all that needs to be done is connecting to the house itself. I was originally planning a little bit of a different shape, but you know how things are. So now I have to adapt to a little bit of an off-center thing. And you might think, oh, the build is ruined and maybe, but what you want to do is adapt your build to whatever little flaws you've made to it. If you accidentally did something like this, then try making it work. I could easily put in a staircase and have a double door here, maybe a porch. A lot of different things would work. So make sure to use that to your advantage because a mistake might make your build more interesting in the end. Now I've gotten some landscape all around. Our little accents here in the form of dark oak are everywhere. And we have some basic planter boxes using spruce trapdoors for the extra contrast. So you can see everything that's going on. The only other change is that I changed all the granite to die right. From here, add your entrance wherever that may be. And then we can finally move to inside. And you might notice, wow, these rooms are quite tall. And that's completely intentional because there's something that I find pretty annoying in some of my past builds. They have flat ceilings. They're quite boring. So instead, why not do something more interesting? This will require a little bit more work in the long run, but it'll look better. And then you need lanterns too, because torches, I mean, fire hazard. So what you want to do here is choose a spot on the wall and then build these little supports and make them go across and mirror them. Make these on every single segment you see here. And that's the benefit of the segmented design that I use. The fact that it's very tileable and can be replicated quite easily. Place a lantern on those. And then in between, you'll want to place down some oak slabs like this. Of course, place them a little better than I do. Because of course, you know, a little clumsy here. But anyways, place down some oak, well, stairs and then blend them into the ceiling like this and then tile this all across. Once you're done, then you should be in this area and we need to add a staircase so it's better to not do the roof here until we have said staircase. Here we have ourselves a nice little roof here. I added an extra support going down the middle and rounded out this edge here, which makes a nice little hallway thing. Now, I use the same rules, except I made the oak and spruce the same height in order to produce this area here, with an open gap for a spiral staircase. In this case, what you want to do is build your spiral staircase, 4x4, and you might want to do differing designs. I'm going to be using oak as a placeholder. Either you might want to do this, of course, it's a little simplistic, or you might want to chop off the corners and keep going up like this. There's a lot of different ways you can do it, but I recommend experimenting. The only thing I recommend not doing if you're doing the spiral pattern is doing this. This is boring. Don't do it. 
and once you're done with it, make sure it goes down because we want to use this very dark area down here. Although there are a couple gaps in the build that I need to fix, still, this area is going to be delegated to storage because, well, it's kind of annoying to fit it in a house like this with a bunch of windows. Now, you can see I have a complex spiral staircase for once. And this one's a little different because you can see how it loops around another spiral staircase. So, we start off like this. We place down two blocks, and then another two, and keep doing this. And then, we'll have a secondary staircase tracing it like this. We cut off the corners for, you know, aesthetic reasons. And it barely keeps up. Eventually, it desyncs with the central column, allowing you to take little shortcuts like this. Although, that was a pretty useless one. But, either way, it's an interesting spiral staircase. You might want to add corners anyways because it's inconvenient. Because, well, you have to go around these corners constantly. So, with this out of the way, what do you want to do? Well, I recommend, well, putting a ceiling. If you don't have a ceiling, that's a pretty large issue. You can copy the lower ceiling. And then, from here, your build should be getting pretty close to complete. Another thing you might have noticed is out here, I added a bunch of texturing to the diorite. Some of its polish variation and a bunch of stairs. Notice how they form cracks in it. But one important thing is, in no point of this can I ever fall into a little pothole. If it's on your stairs, then you might want to make the back diorite as well, like this. You know, little details. Although it might bleed through. Speaking of which, I need to fix this. So, it's up to you about whether you want to keep those little holes in the staircase or not. But, either way, once you have that done, it's time to move on to the roof. And to do that, start by, well, pretending you're going to build a third floor. I do not recommend a third floor. This is already pushing it for an easy build. You might have to reevaluate that rating anyways. Because, well, we're going to build a very tall roof. You can see, Dark Oak is going to go up like this. And then I'm going to end it off, something simple, and then we're going to have a bit of a rounded tip, and then we're going to go up for the warped roof. With my complex explanation over, and generally most of this thing done, it's now time for roofing, and it's pretty easy. That's the thing with this build. Sure, it might be giant, but all the concepts here are relatively simple. It's putting them all together that can make it difficult. What you want to do is go around the rounded corners and place it like this. You can see how I place a block and then a stair. And the next step is to do the same thing. Block, stair, block, stair. Very simple process. In fact, you could potentially almost automate it in your head if you were to do it right. Go all the way up until you reach a center point. You can see how this part of the build is an odd number of blocks. Whenever we, we reach the top here, of course, it's going to be different than that. Then, we want to make a dark oak line. Even though we're not going to keep the dark oak line, it gives a general idea of where the build needs to cap off at. So, do this. Go all the way up until you reach a meeting point, And then, flatten that area all the way to here. Because we don't want to go higher on this part because, well, they're both on the same floor. It would be weird. With the roof now in place, technically the exterior could be considered done, besides some miscellaneous details. But there are a couple issues you have to confront. One, the fact that, well, these areas go to different heights if you're to continue the pattern. This would go taller than this part. So, I shortened this and left that part a little bit taller, but that creates a weird effect. The answer? Well, there isn't exactly a concrete answer, because this is building after all. It's up to you about what you want to do for this part. Do you want to make this part taller, or do you want to shrink the other part? Leave it all how it would be normally? It's up to you. But some tips that might help you are replacing these corner pieces with dark oak and then making the top dark oak. So, if I replace these pieces here, then you'll notice that it provides a little bit of framing. And this is up to you whether you actually like this effect. 
but if you're to do it on all the different sides of this, who knows, it might be something you like. So, experiment a little and see what works and what doesn't. With a little bit of experimenting and a little bit more of procrastinating, I've roughly got an idea of how to make this roof look decent. Adding a chimney has helped greatly. Even though it's not perfect, at the same time, despite me being a building YouTuber, I am not the best either. So this is what I could come up with. It's up to you whether you want to change anything. And of course, make sure to look out for the small details. Sometimes something might work, like this. But it's up to you whether that actually works. So think about it for a while, and then see do any of these ideas work for you. But from here, what you want to do is your landscaping. Of course, I secretly added this bush here. It's up to you whether you want this one. I'm not entirely sure myself. And then some flowers around here and make sure to have your flower boxes up here filled with things. Don't forget, you are in a meadow, which is typically associated with taigas, I'd feel, even if that's not necessarily the case. So get some sweet berries. Who knows, they might look really good. I'm going to decorate these with sweet berries and pretty much all of them with sweet berries because that little red accent really helps it build, especially since I swapped out diorite, or I mean granite with diorite. Now, I have a lot of landscape going on. A lot for a supposedly easy, definitely a medium tier build now that I think back on it. And you can see the intermittent lighting really adds something to the build. Going up these stairs, all the cracked stuff, and another place. You know, perfect outro. From here, what you want to do is move on to the interior. And here is a bad example of an interior. Look, what's going on here? Yeah, nothing. And you can see, well, this is pretty boring. I only have one miscellaneous detail, that being an armor stand in case you upgraded to diamond. Instead, go for something a bit more unique. You might want to add a little wall here to divide the room, decorated pots, and what do you know? This room has a lot going on. You can see how each area of the room seems like it's been filled up by something. Really seems lived in. And this is what effect you want to achieve. What you want to do is a lot of trap doors, fill it up with things you need, even the things you might think, oh, I don't necessarily need that, such as carrots, because of course, brewing. Look in here, waterlogged stair, so that way they can still grow. With all this in mind, Decorate your interior accordingly. And then we can finally move on to the basement. Yeah, the basement is going to be a bit harder because it has a bit more of a dreary palette, but still, it will be interesting to see. Now, taking that we've everything decorated, or else it's more or less wasted to heart, I've created this. Does this seem kind of complex? Yes. Is this really just an idea dump? Yes. So. Put in as many little things as you can in here, and don't worry about putting it all in at once. Make it grow as you do in Minecraft. You can see how this globe banner pattern only gotten from villagers, so maybe that could be a monument to, hey, I traded with a cartographer. So use all these ideas in order to create a more interesting build. Put chests on shelves rather than the floor, and maybe even decorate your carpets a little. This one's intentionally left a little more bare, but a little thing that I like doing is putting wool in the middle, and then adding carpets on top of it to make it look a little less uniform. And you can see how this works out. Make sure to place wool under things like stairs since you can't put carpet. And here's our library. And this might seem quite large, especially compared to its brewing version down here. And it's only one segment larger. I accomplished this by making it more labyrinthine. You can see it's kind of complex to navigate, I removed the lanterns on most of it. It's more interesting. Also, put some lapis storage next to it, saves you a bunch of time. So with this in mind, we now have the majority of the structure done, and we can go down to the basement, turning on night vision. And what you want to do down here is finish up anything that you were not able to add up there. And I recommend adding anvils down here. Not going to go terribly complex, but put your main storage down here as well. Here we are at the basement. 
you can see how I used the same sort of design philosophy, made sure the ceiling was cracked, added in a little bit of a lava pit here, pretty expensive plating though, blast furnace 4, forge for furnaces, anvils, make sure that they're facing opposite directions or else you get a weird effect like this. So make sure to do it like this. And then for the rest of it, storage, replace the bamboo mosaic with whatever block you're putting in these chests. And otherwise, you are complete with this build. Make sure to put the nether portal a little bit lower. I used a little bit of a unique design with the nether fortress background, but remember, people are going to hear it on the on the surface. That's not going to be very preferable. So try to put it a bit lower down so you don't constantly hear portal noises. Evidently, I did not put it low enough. But regardless, this build is complete. Ever wanted a little bit more expensive build, but still technically a starter build for your meadows? Well, this is the build for you. Go to the nether, get some warped wood, get some dark oak, and you can start building this relatively quickly due to the cheap resources. It's only the size that really holds it back from being easy. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw out.